a very warm welcome to this webinar. I think this is really some, a special moment. Uh, we had 1,300 registrations for this webinar to listen, of course, not uh, uh, to the three of us, but to the two ministers, Olaf Scholz from Germany and Roberto Gualtieri from uh, Italy. And uh, the background of this is uh, that um, Alexandra Giese, Franziska Brandner and myself, together with Italian colleagues, we initiated a campaign which is called We Are In This Together. At the height of the beginning of the corona crisis, we called for um, common bonds to be issued in order to get out of the crisis. We are delighted that also with the help of the two ministers present with us, this became actually a reality. It was widely noted noted that Germans and Italians called together for this measure. Uh, we then had a second call uh, asking for refinancing the costs of this crisis, also by a zero tolerance policy towards money laundering, financial criminality, and tax avoidance and tax evasion. And now we are delighted that we can discuss this with the two ministers who are sitting at the negotiation table where actually tax policy is being made. We are also grateful to all the citizens and uh, who signed, all the intellectuals and economists who co-signed our uh, two calls, including Mario Monti, Tito Boeri, uh, and uh, who helped us designing this, these two appeals. Um, I would like to point out that this is a public webinar. You can ask questions after um, the ministers have uh, spoken. Uh, we have three languages. We have translation into Italian, uh, German, and uh, myself, I will speak what I regard as English. So, um, and, uh, that, and we will listen, of course, to the ministers and, and listen to, of course, uh, the response to our call on this zero tolerance policy. I would like to remind for all those who haven't read it before the webinar, the key ideas behind this text is that corporate income should be based, should be taxed on the consolidated uh, corporate European tax base, uh, which ideally is being negotiated also at the OECD level and then taxed with the EU minimum tax rate also uh, ideally negotiated at the OECD level until the end of the year. Second, a digital tax, ideally agreed internationally, but if this is not possible, uh, first uh, moved on the European level. Third, an, a clear uh, end uh, to VAT fraud and a deblocking of the file in the European Council in order to increase uh, cooperation between the member states to fight VAT, uh, and also a European approach to tackle dividend arbitrage uh, schemes such as CUMEX and the like. Fourth, we are calling for an income tax regime with no larger loopholes, such as those which allow, for instance, to shift uh, profits from Germany to Luxembourg from a property basis or which allow lump sum taxation like in Italy for rich individuals or non-DOM regimes in Malta and the like. We want to defend the progressive uh, personal income taxes we are having. And lastly, we are calling for a determined approach to end money laundering. We have taken note of the moves of the council. Uh, we want a common European regulator, a common European supervisor, a common European FIU and also a European financial police. These demands were signed by more than 4,000 citizens and many economists in both countries. And also as our original uh, call for the common bonds were signed by more than 25,000 people in Italy and Germany. And now uh, we are curious to listen to your response because we have seen many proposals on taxation on the European level. Many of them uh, are blocked in council. So many citizens are curious, how do we get out of the blockage? We know it's not mainly your responsibility that this is blocked. At least you are not the ones who usually said no to those. But the question is how to get out of it. And that's the last point in our call. 
uh, how can we maximize the use of majority voting in the area of taxation and um, the tr including what is possible in the treaty. So my name is Sven Giegold. I'm the green uh, coordinator in the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee of the European Parliament. I have to admit, I know Roberto since a long time because we were together in this and uh, have done a lot of things uh, together. And uh, we uh, and I was sad to that you are leaving and glad that you are now minister in Italy. So uh, uh, I would uh, suggest uh, to give uh, the floor uh, uh, first uh, to, um, to Roberto. I think that's what we agreed, right? And, uh, and listen to your response. Uh, please be brief so that citizens have time then to Olaf Scholz and then uh, we give, uh, give the floor to questions. Please, Roberto. Sorry, the microphone, yes, okay. Thank you, Sven. Uh, thank you for all of you for uh, um, inviting me to this uh, webinar and uh, a warm uh, uh, hello, hi to, to, to Olaf uh, and uh, all those who are watching us. Um, I think uh, uh, you uh, are raising a crucial uh, issue in this moment. Europe uh, has uh, given uh, a strong uh, signal of uh, vitality and capacity to address one of the uh, worst crises in our history with uh, really a uh, fundamental step forward uh, in the process of integration. And I really would like also to thank uh, Olaf uh, for what uh, he has done because uh, he uh, deserves a lot of uh, uh, merit and credit for what has happened and uh, in uh, with the next generation EU program uh, and this uh, uh, answer response to the crisis uh, uh, which is uh, fundamental in order to uh, not only protect our single market uh, avoid convergence but also um, really give a, a sense of uh, a Europe uh, which is not uh, a market and the currency but is a Europe of citizens of solidarity uh, and of common uh, future. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the fact that we are borrowing uh, billions uh, is uh, very good, uh, and uh, I also agree that uh, uh, we should make permanent uh, what we are doing now uh, with this uh, extraordinary program. But uh, uh, this element, and also, and also what we have been seeing in terms of uh, uh, impact uh, of the crisis on public finances, uh, uh, national level and also uh, increasing uh, difference between uh, winner and losers in these uh, structural changes uh, on the market uh, tell us that uh, we need really to uh, make uh, some additional uh, fundamental step forward in the area of uh, taxation and uh, indeed uh, as you say uh, introduce really a zero tolerance policy uh, on uh, tax uh, fraud, tax uh, evasion, and money laundering. Uh, and uh, I think we have to be uh, proud uh, of what we have been doing so far, because uh, also thanks to uh, what the European Parliament, uh, and uh, thanks to the investigative journalism, uh, thanks to the commitment of many governments, we have to recognize that in the last years, uh, uh, both at the European and international level and at national level, we have done a number of important progress. Uh, I would not uh, recall all the directives we have adopted in the last years. It is really an impressive series of uh, uh, DAC 1, 2, 3, AML, and, et cetera, et cetera. We all know this stuff very well. Uh, but uh, uh, at the same time, we know that uh, now we are really at the heart uh, of a fundamental step forward that needs to be done. I would also, in order to be brief, not elaborate much on how for the Italian government tackling tax fraud, uh, evasion and avoidance is a political priority and how uh, a number of measures that we have been taking, not only this government, but also previous governments in terms of uh, 
uh, addressing these issues, uh, electronic invoice, uh, strengthening uh, our action uh, of uh, FIU, of Guardia di Finanza, uh, has, has proved to be a very effective policy to increase tax revenue. We are seeing uh, an increase, a constant increase of tax revenues, uh, which is fundamental, especially for a country with a high public debt as Italy uh, in the last years and, uh, uh, and especially in the last months uh, before the crisis and even during the crisis, thanks to these uh, uh, very um, strong choices we have, uh, we, have, we, have, we have taken. And I would be glad if uh, uh, someone is interested to elaborate a bit more on what we have done. But uh, as I said, what, what we have achieved at both the international European level and the national level is uh, insufficient. And that's why I really welcome the five, six point actually, because Article 116 is uh, equally fundamental that you uh, raised in your, in your uh, petition. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, would not be a surprise uh, as uh, Sven Francisca other know my position very well on this topic that uh, I'm in strong agreement uh, with basically uh, all the points that uh, you you have raised, and I really quickly could can elaborate uh, on them. Uh, point number one: uh, uh, CCCTB uh, minimum tax rate and public country by country reporting is of course uh, essential. Uh, we are uh, close to an agreement, an international agreement, OECD 11, on the so-called Pillar 2, so minimum effective taxation level. And of course, we have to do our best to uh, arrive uh, to a concrete result. Of course, a framework of a common corporate consolidate tax basis would be uh, a good framework also to uh, for this uh, uh, agreement and international and international level as well as uh, we regret the fact that public country by country report uh, reported is blocked in the council the position the italian position has always been and is to try to finalize uh, this file including the current uh, legal basis uh, on uh, dump point number two the digital taxation uh, uh, we know that uh, the, 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 the very important effort that has been done at an international level to arrive uh, to a common uh, solution uh, in the framework of OECD uh, was we were really close to, 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 to an agreement, but uh, uh, we also know that now, uh, especially after the, the very strong position of the so-called safe harbor, uh, from one very important country, uh, this uh, agreement is uh, so far not, uh, at least for in the next months, not, uh, not, not in sight. So, of course, our, we, we think that we should try to pursue uh, a solution at the OECD level on uh, digital taxation, but uh, uh, we think that uh, if this solution will not be uh, achieved, then uh, the European Union, the Commission, should, uh, we, we have an obligation, let's say, to try to uh, achieve a solution at European level, both on the specific uh, digital side and, again, in the framework of a so-called CCCTV with uh, the uh, digital presence concept uh, and so on. Um, VAT reform. Uh, is, uh, is very important, is positive. Uh, we supported the recent directive uh, that revised the VAT rules on the e-commerce uh, that will enter into force by mid-21. Of course, a relevant step would be the adoption of the Commission proposal of the VAT definitive system. We support that as well as we support the action plan of the Commission uh, uh, proposal last uh, July. Uh, on personal income taxation and tax competition, this is, uh, I mean, a uh, very uh, heavy element that we are uh, bringing forward. But uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, extending, uh, we are, we are, it's the right time to discuss the revision of the mandate of the Code of Conduct Group. And uh, I think that uh, um, bringing also in this framework also the income tax uh, as, uh, as an element, uh, I think uh, is, it makes sense. So it's something, uh, of course, uh, you mentioned also an Italian law that uh, we inherited from the past, uh, which, uh, let's say, uh, goes in a different direction. I think that uh, moving uh, a European level 
toward uh, avoiding this kind of national loopholes uh, would be positive. So if we uh, are able to, uh, to, to let's say, to broaden the scope of the uh, minor code of conduct, also uh, this uh, personal uh, income taxation, I think it would be a positive, a positive, a positive development. Finally, on anti-money laundering uh, uh, supervisor, uh, I think that uh, indeed after the, the important uh, step forward we have achieved with the various uh, revision of the directive uh, to move uh, uh, to a uh, stronger AML European supervision mechanism uh, with all the elements that you have identified would be, would be essential particularly in the financial sector. We all know the various weakness and the fact that uh, we are not happy that uh, problems are signaled from outside. Uh, and uh, so we have uh, had a long uh, discussion about uh, this problem. Of course, uh, for us, uh, that we have to say, uh, we are proud also of our capabilities, uh, national capabilities in anti-money laundering. For us, it's very important that this, uh, let's say, harmonization, urbanization does not mean a race to the bottom. So uh, we are thinking of a, of, a, of a mechanism where you have also capacity uh, to step up, step in a European level, but you don't risk to uh, reduce the capability of those systems which are very advanced for us is really essential because uh, so uh, this is a, a crucial a crucial component of an effort but we are of course in favor of a process of uh, building a stronger AML European supervision framework and mechanism so uh, all this uh, uh, brings to the last point and I would be really Brief stories have been too long, which is how to achieve all these elements. We know that uh, in a certain area we have a qualified majority, ordinary legislative procedure. In others, unfortunately, we are not. Uh, what we have achieved in the last years show that uh, where there's a strong will from the relevant member state and from the parliament, uh, also this uh, unanimity uh, uh, problem can be tackled and addressed because we have honestly achieved the unanimity also on very controversial items in the last years. But of course, uh, I think the, the effort of exploring uh, the, the, the Article 116 legal basis also for, in certain area, uh, introduce uh, a qualified majority voting and ordinary legislative would be a very powerful incentive, let's say, uh, uh, to uh, avoid to be blocked by vetoes on elements where uh, also we have been very close to achieve an agreement and I hope we will be able to achieve an agreement at the international level. So I think this element, uh, the work that the Commission is doing on Article 116 is a positive one and we uh, support it. So thank you and uh, uh, sorry for being too long but uh, I pass the floor to Olaf. <laughs> Thank you for the precise answers. Uh, without further ado, to Minister Olaf Scholz, only to point out, of course, you have the opportunity to type in your questions under F and A. And also, uh, if exciting things are being said here, please don't hesitate to share them on Twitter, on the social media, so that we maximize the outreach of our We Are In This Together campaign. Olaf Scholz, please. Thank you for being with us, the two of you, again. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for your kind invitation to participate in this webinar. Questions of global taxation policy are both important and urgent. I'm convinced that our globalized economy needs a truly global corporate taxation framework. And this framework must be fit for the digital age. Since I took office, one of my top priorities has been to achieve such a global framework, and I strongly advocate for a global effective minimum level of taxation. This is because we need to make profit shifting and tax avoidance a thing of the past. Major multinationals with large profits must also pay their fair share of taxes. For one thing, this is about fair competition. The companies with the best products should attract investors, not the companies with the most devious tax planners. Implementing the OECD's action plan against space erosion and profit shifting was an important achievement in the area of international tax policy and a necessary first step to push back tax rulings. 
However, even after the completion of many BEPS action items, important issues remain to be solved. This means that further measures need to be taken. And this is where the proposal for a global minimum taxation comes in, which I made together with my French colleague Bruno Le Maire. Our initiative for fair taxation found quick support from other political leaders and the G20 tasked the OECD with presenting a plan for global corporate tax reform in 2020, a reform that will really work in practice like the BEPS items. Words by themselves will not change anything. The OECD's work in this area consists of two pillars. In pillar one, we are negotiating the allocation of taxing rights. The goal is to allocate tax revenue in a way that reflects how and where value is added in the digital economy. Pillar one is very important because it will avoid unilateral measures and lead to a fairer global taxation environment. Countries will benefit if they gain more, if they gain more taxing rights. But businesses can also benefit from a globally agreed framework that avoids double or even multiple taxation. This is why we call for support for Pillar 1 and will continue to advocate for a consensus within the inclusive framework. In Pillar 2, we are developing a plan for a global minimum taxation based on our joint Franco-German proposal. Pillar 2 is ready for political agreement. The work is at an advanced stage and the plan gains broad support. 137 nations and jurisdictions are taking part in the negotiations. Due to this multilateral approach, the deliberations are quite demanding at times, but it, it is worth spending time and effort on this unique project. The work will lead to unprecedented global tax reform. And we are not only talking about taxation. A multilateral agreement will also help to prevent a possible escalation of trade conflicts that could be caused by unilateral actions of individual states. I'm very confident that my colleagues and I can soon bring these negotiations to a positive conclusion. There's global consensus that something must be done and the momentum is on our side. Today, many countries around the world support minimum tax rates, including the United States. The US has in fact already introduced a form of a minimum taxation. We will soon have blueprints that show the state of play on both the allocation of taxing rights and on a global minimum taxation. The EU is contributing to this progress at OECD level in a very constructive way. During Germany's Council Presidency, we will have detailed discussions about outcomes of the OECD process, and we will talk about the necessary conclusions from an EU perspective. In this context, I also welcome the European Commission's announcement that it will pro propose a digital levy that would take effect by January 2023. We will soon discuss how to align this proposal with the OECD process. In addition to the issue of corporate taxation, Germany's EU level efforts during our council presidency are also focusing on the fight against VAT fraud and money laundering. In July 2020, the European Commission presented an action plan for fair and simple taxation Alongside legal proposals to strengthen the VAT system in general, it contains several measures to tackle VAT fraud. In addition, the European Commission will soon propose the creation of an EU anti-money laundering supervisor. I strongly support these initiatives, not least because I called for such an entity together with a number of European colleagues last year. I will press ahead with the necessary discussions on this issue in the Council as soon as possible. Finally, we should also keep working towards a common corporate tax base at the European level. In 2018, Bruno Le Maire and I made a proposal that would have limited tax arbitrage. But back then, we did not have the necessary majority among our European partners. 
This example shows that the fight against tax evasion is an ongoing endeavor. And yes, in the world of tax evasion, there are numerous law firms, banks, and even states whose business model is to help those who do not want to pay their fair share of taxes. These actors create pressure against change. That is why constructive counter pressure from civil society is needed. So thank you for this initiative. I invite you to direct your energy and anger at the right targets. And I can assure you of one thing, making life harder for tax evaders will succeed if we stand to close together. Thank you and uh, I hope we will have a good discussion and many questions to be answered. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, thank you for these precise answers uh, from the two of you uh, on our questions. I will directly, uh, without further ado, read you some of the questions of the citizens uh, and uh, may come in uh, also my colleagues uh, at a later moment. So uh, actually, I summarize now a bit uh, things which have been said. So one question is, uh, by um, Olivia, and Olivia is basically, I summarize saying, look, uh, we know public country by country reporting, which Roberto Gualtieri mentioned, also with a partly in the council contested legal base, which allows then for majority voting, is contested uh, inside of the coalition of the German government, while the Austrian uh, government uh, is, has now announced publicly that they would now vote in favor. So therefore there could be a majority for this so, so far called measure in council, blocked measure in council. So therefore the question to Mr. Scholz is, can Ms. Minister Scholz confirm if this file be on the agenda of the upcoming working party on company law on the 12th of October and the competitiveness council on November uh, 19 and 20, so that the proposal can finally uh, be voted and hopefully successfully be voted. Uh, then, um, uh, yeah, there's a, a question from David Bucking to, um, to Roberto Gualtieri. Mr. Gualtieri, uh, are there Italian measures against money laundering that you would recommend to other EU countries? And Mr. Scholz, do you think we can learn from Italy in this regard? Uh, this is referring to a remark in our call that Italy has a far reaching and stronger regime uh, than um, in many other countries, including Germany. Uh, then, uh, perhaps I, I ask uh, one more uh, question, and um, this is uh, uh, this ayah. Um, I read you the following. It's by a tax expert, uh, Mr. Trautvetter, who is uh, saying the following. A study published today has shown that big investors continue to shift non-digital bricks and mortar profits from European real estate, largely untaxed through Luxembourg, despite LuxLeaks, BEPS, and Atat, Will any of the measures presented today address this problem? Um, I guess this is mainly directed to Mr. Scholz, but perhaps we will have the same problem in Italy. Perhaps uh, you can start, uh, um, Mr. Scholz. Thank you for the questions and uh, the really uh, the energy which, which we can see behind the questions. First, about public by country reporting. As uh, you know, or you may know, I'm supporting the idea of public country by country reporting. Uh, as you also know, this is not the, the idea of the whole government. The coalition is split in this uh, view so that if there is uh, a decision, the German government is uh, not, uh, not voting as uh, it, it happens many times. I hope that we will be able to overcome this, but in the end, I also see what uh, was in the question 
that uh, there is an increasing number of countries supporting it. And so I think that uh, it will be not too far from now that a majority vote with a qualified majority will come and we will see it. And this will, give, this will produce the necessary progress. So I cannot be more precise as I am. There is uh, not a common view of the German government. I personally prefer public uh, by country reporting. And this is so because we have very good uh, experience now with the country by country reporting. Um, this is not public, but we get a lot of information. We have uh, numerous agreements with several countries all over the world. We get uh, thousands of information from that we implement into the activities of the tax authorities in Germany. And we try to learn also from this information for general views on taxation. So it is really helpful. And I think this would be even more so if this would be public. Though I think it would be for specialists to, to, to understand this, but this, <laughs> there are enough specialists to look at it. Um, can we learn from Italy? Sure, we all can learn from, learn from each other. And I'm happy to hear from, uh, from Roberto what he will tell us that we could learn from. Um, and in this, uh, in this case, I would like to underline that it is really important that we have something of best practice attitude in this field, because those who are acting to support uh, tax avoidance, to doing tax, tax fraud, those who are shifting uh, their profits to places in the world where there is low taxation or no taxation, and even those who are acting constantly illegal, they also have something of a best practice information system. So it would be very good if governments and people have it also. Um, on the question of, uh, of if there could be profits shifted to other countries uh, from Germany, um, yes, I'm sure that this will happen, especially in the question of some taxes which are uh, taken from uh, when you sell uh, property. Um, but I think that uh, we are working very, we, no, I don't think, we, we are working very hard to make a progress to make it more difficult as it is today. And this is feasible if we find ways to tax uh, companies, even if this is uh, uh, an, an entity that is buying, uh, that is buying, um, and so that it can, can be avoided, the, the tax that is necessary. I hope that we will be able to do the progress, but it's a hard fight and there is a lot of opposition to, that, to, to this, as you will be, will be able to see in any news, newspaper any day. Uh, also one comment to that, in many newspapers you don't find details. You find people mourning about bureaucracy but the bureaucracy we are speaking about is fighting against tax arbitration. And this is a very heavy fight, but you can be sure that when you read in a newspaper something about bureaucracy, it's uh, in the idea of making it more easy to, to avoid taxes. And this is not the right mood. Roberto, please. Minister. Thank you. I agree with what Olaf just said about uh, sometime some campaign on bureaucracy and this uh, <laughs> implication. On uh, on um, on uh, Italian anti-money laundering, um, I think that uh, there is uh, uh, for sure an element of legal framework of uh, on how we have always, uh, uh, let's say, uh, made. Uh, transposition uh, and uh, uh, provisions which are very strong and very demanding. But uh, in my view, uh, the most uh, important element uh, in uh, what I think is, is, is a, uh, indeed a uh, um, high quality of the money laundering, anti money laundering activity uh, in Italy is the strong uh, uh, cooperation between uh, FYU, uh, Bank of Italy, and Guardia di Finanza, and also judiciary, in uh, uh, changes always all the information and uh, uh, acting uh, in strong uh, cooperation uh, in both uh, in all the various stages of this and MLL activity. So this makes uh, uh, this this element of uh, of, of of strong. Uh, um, 
cooperation uh, and the information sharing uh, and also the capability also of uh, Guardia di Finanza, uh, which is a body which has a lot of uh, capability in this area, are, I think, uh, as, as important, even more important than a, a legal framework, which is effective uh, uh, and uh, sound. Uh, but of course, uh, improvements uh, can always be done. And uh, indeed, now we need uh, absolutely an European dimension, uh, a strong European dimension of ML, including uh, with uh, common supervision. Um, on uh, the, the real estate, uh, uh, we are aware uh, of the um, of the um, uh, of this study, which uh, uh, underlines uh, this uh, uh, phenomenon, these risks, uh, and there is a currently at the OECD um, a discussion uh, on the extension of uh, uh, automatic exchange of information. Uh, and administrative cooperation uh, uh, to uh, real estate uh, that uh, can help uh, uh, this uh, uh, development also in uh, improving uh, uh, fight against uh, tax fraud, tax evasion, uh, uh, tax collection uh, in, uh, in, in this area. So is, uh, uh, we are aware of the study that was mentioned and also there is an ongoing work at OECD level on this. Thank, thank you, thank you. Um, yes, I have a number of more uh, interesting questions uh, from uh, citizens. I would uh, first like to to read a or from original Italian translated question from Giorgio Soloni. Um, he's asking: It is very difficult to convince tax havens like Luxembourg the Netherlands, Ireland, to raise taxes. Um, we could instead introduce an additional tax to the tax that the big corporation pay uh, on the turnover coming from each, uh, in each European state. So if Amazon has a turnover of 10 in Ireland and 990 in the other European states and pays 5% of the total European turnover in Ireland, an additional tax is introduced say 10% on the 990 achieved in the other European states. So what do you say on this? Then an old friend, Roberto Biaki smith Meyer from Politico uh, is asking, uh, should the commission uh, use article 116 uh, with regard to the blocked interests and royalties directive to tackle the market distortion in the EU when it comes to profit shifting with interest and royalties. And lastly, I have here, um, I have here a very interesting question, I guess, directed to both of you by Massimiliano Nespola. He's asking, in my opinion, we Europeans have to work hard for our judicial system harmonization because of the different traditions. For example, only re Italy recognizes the crime of uh, forming or being member of a mafia organization. So I understand the question, should this concept be Europeanized? And there's also a question by my colleague, uh, Franziska Brandner, whom I would now like for her question give the floor. Yeah, good evening from my side. Uh, great seeing you, Roberto, and thank you, Mr. Scholz, for being here. Um, besides being a tax and finance expert, uh, Roberto uh, is also a foreign expert, quite a uh, foreign policy expert. We negotiated the external action service uh, at the time. It's almost 10 years ago. So um, <laughs> you have that external dimension for a long time. And there was a question in the chat as well, which I wanted to pick up, because if we talk about uh, fighting criminal use, uh, abuse of our laws um, and money laundering, etc. This all is based on the assumption that we have functioning rule of law systems in our member states. And we have now the compromise which has been presented by the presidency when it comes to linking the EU funds, the next generation EU fund and the uh, multi-financial framework uh, to 
the rule of law and democracy. And we have been quite shocked to see that all the criteria of the independence of the judiciary um, a functioning bureaucracy where you can file a complaint that the scope has been limited so much that it's as narrow um, and that it doesn't really talk about the rule of law anymore. I understand, Mr. Scholz, that you're the council presidency, uh, but I hope that now when it comes to negotiations with the parliament, that we will be able to at least enlarge the scope. And I would be interested to see how the two of you see it, because I think if we don't have a functioning rule of law, then much of what we talk about won't even be able to apply. Roberto, please. Um, okay, so um, the first uh, uh, question uh, of Giorgio Soloni, I'm not sure I fully understood the question, but I try to, to answer to what I understood. Um, First, uh, uh, on the on the revenue taxation for, from the revenue side, that's what we, we have been doing at national level. Some European countries with our DST, which which have been introduced in the interim uh, of a, a global, uh, international, uh, and or European solution, uh, we are aware that uh, this is a suboptimal approach to taxation. Uh, taxation should be directed to profits and of course uh, uh, profits where they have been made they should be taxed and so this is the all the BEPS concept so uh, I, of course there are always possible poss possibilities uh, to let's say to uh, compensate the uh, lack of uh, agreement and, um, and provisions uh, uh, on the profit side to address the problem of uh, taxation on the revenue side. And uh, that's what we have been doing. So I cannot deny that it uh, uh, can work, but uh, it is not the best solution. So it's something that uh, uh, I think uh, would be better to transform in a, in a, in a, in a, in a solution based on profits. And uh, as far as the interest uh, royalties um, directives, I think this problem, uh, uh, should be solved uh, if we, as all have said, and we are all supportive to this, and also I thank all for the leadership in this uh, field, uh, uh, will finalize the agreement on Pillar 2, so minimum effective taxation. This would also cover this problem of uh, interest uh, uh, royalties. Um, on the Francisca question, that's uh, uh, difficult also because this is not something uh, is uh, under ECOFIN, the remit, so is. Uh, not me negotiating this uh, specific uh, component of the Article 7, uh, but of course we are following the developments. And uh, I think uh, the answer cannot but be a very political one, uh, that of course uh, there is a difficult negotiation and the attempt by uh, the, the, the Council Presidency to find a compromise solution that would allow the file to be unblocked to move forward and uh, so uh, we understand that uh, and this is uh, a good way of exerting the presidency role to try to uh, because we need of course uh, to have the, the, be the best possible uh, framework but we need also to have the next generation EU uh, agreement and all the agreement on the budget in place. So, of course, this is a delicate balance. I know very well all, all, all of us which have been negotiating in trilogues uh, and uh, have always this dilemma. Where is the right uh, 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 appropriate level of a compromise? Is a compromise too uh, low, uh, but uh, what is the alternative? So it's, it's very delicate and you have to be there really negotiating to, to, to say, okay, maybe this is uh, uh, not uh, enough to water down or this so the, the, is, is acceptable. So uh, I think that, uh, uh, of course, Europe should strengthen its capacity to uh, be a, a union of rural law when respect of rural law is a fundamental feature, not only a, a, requ a requirement, not only for become European Union member, but also to uh, be uh, a, a member uh, during the, not only after the exception. So this is a problem we have. We all know the weakness, uh, the legal weakness of Article 7. We all know, you know, the problems which make uh, uh, difficult to enforce these things. And so the fact that we try to link this to uh, funding 
is also a way to try to solve the problems which should not actually be related to funding because uh, uh, in, 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 a, in a polity you try to enforce rule of law not because you say if you don't follow rule of law I don't give you the money that's not how it works in a, in a, in a legal state this is uh, you, you don't need you should not need to use this side so this is all, all already uh, trying to uh, to address this problem. this level is is, is is the consequence of uh, uh, the difficulty to address this issue at the proper level. Of course, we are in favor and we supported the rural procedure provisions in the, in the framework of a next generation EU. We know that it's a sensitive element and we uh, are supportive. We are ambitious, so we would support the more ambitious, of course, requirement, but uh, we are aware that the need to find the viable compromise and we know that uh, the presidency of the council is doing its best to at the same time have uh, the best possible outcome and to have a, a positive outcome which is also something that european citizens expect Olaf Scholz, please so for having more questions i would like to be very brief first i think we need majority voting in the council especially if we discuss questions within the foreign ministers and also in the ECOFIN. This is the two where it is mostly needed that we make a progress into this direction. And there is a chance for doing so without changing the treaties, because we have the chance to do it anonymously, that we say that afterwards we will have decisions with a qualified majority on certain topics. And this, I think, should be the next step. And especially in tax questions, it would help very much, because... My experience in the last two years in, this, uh, in the ECOFIN is that uh, a lot of decisions would have been possible uh, if not one or two would have opposed them. And these are not always the same, but there is always one or two. And so it, is, it would make a difference if we could get this progress that majority voting or a qualified majority, a voting with qualified majority would be feasible. And this is uh, directing me to the question of uh, tax heavens and what is happening with tax arbitration within the EU. As we know, many of the progress we made in the past came first from agreements within the OECD and on the international level. Many of the progresses uh, in Europe fighting against BEPS were made after an OECD agreement was done and then no one opposed it anymore within the EU. And so it is really important that we try to get the necessary progress now on the OECD level, because if we do so, there is a good chance that this will also be a solution for the European Union. And possibly this is the answer to the question the first, uh, uh, the first uh, questioner uh, asked us and, uh, and uh, how we could be more successful in this fight. I'm sure that this will happen for the next years always. It is the big question. It's a big struggle. It will be a big struggle. But we have to make progress in this field and you can be sure that Roberto and me, we will work very hard to make the progress and to make it possible. Uh, there was the question about uh, judicial systems. Oh, no, let me come back to the question of tax havens. For instance, one of the big tasks for the future in Europe will be the banking union. And I'm, I'm very much supporting the idea of making the progress during this period of the parliament, which means that we should have the agreement in one or two years. But if we want to have a banking union, we cannot have different uh, taxes for banks in different countries. This is part of a feasible deal that we have the same, uh, the t same tax. Otherwise, they will take the benefits from all the others and then go to a country with a low tax. This is not working. And so we have to understand that all these things are linked to each other. Uh, coming to the judicial system, I think that it is a key for the necessary progress uh, because if we are if we want to have trust from citizens and corporates uh, to, the, to the activities they take, it is necessary that they could rely on this working judicial system. And to the more concrete question on, on mafia organizations and things like that, in Germany we have legislation like this since the 70s. Um, if there are 
criminal groups they can be uh, we can fight against them and even go against those who are just members of the criminal group without doing the individual uh, uh, things wrong and uh, and and this is this helped us a lot and will help us also in the cases of the financial system um, looking at uh, the question of rule of law um, yes we need progress to the situation we have today and it is was a progress that this was mentioned in the council decision it is really helpful that the parliament is so strong on this question now we have uh, a proposal for the parliament which uh, got uh, um, most um, a lot of support uh, in, 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 in from other states though there was some opposition from some states who thought it going is going too far some others saying it's not going far enough but in the end it's the starting point for a debate and i will very much support what roberto said if we want to fight against the crisis we have to take the progress which is now feasible and this is the decision of the recovery program that there will be a debt that is taken with sovereign bonds from the european union which they uh, which, which will they, we will use to, to finance the recovery program, that it will be paid back and that there will be European own resources. And for having all this done, it is necessary that it, there is a decision by Council, Parliament and Member States before this year ends. So we have to hurry up and to find a compromise, though it's very difficult in this question. Ministers, uh, do you have time for another round of questions or are you sharp at eight? Then I will have to conclude uh, now. Short questions and short answers. Okay. okay. I didn't hear opposition from Berlin. Uh, and as I was told not to shoot at the wrong target, uh, I will uh, follow that and accordingly. So uh, several citizens from several countries ask, isn't now the opportunity to build uh, enough support for a real European financial transaction tax? Italy in the past was reluctant to a wider tax base of the FTT. Uh, and um, on the other hand, there was... Uh, the proposal to have a, a European FTT with 10 countries, but a rather narrow tax base, wouldn't the Corona crisis be the trigger to finally have support for an FTT on the European level with a broad tax base? Then there was uh, the question I'm summarizing now to Mr. Scholz, what is your strategy to unblock the VAT file in council, VAT fraud, is the main costly and most costly uh, area of fiscal fraud. So um, the question was, what is your strategy in this regard? Uh, and uh, the, to the two ministers, there was the question by Sarah Paes, um, having regard to the recent report of ESMA concerning dividend arbitrage and CUM-X, do you support European measures to tackle dividend arbitrage, including those which have been made by ESMA, so that there would have to be a new proposal by the Commission to finally end this dirty business model. Um, perhaps who is now, I think it's now then perhaps Olaf, so that uh, Roberto has the last word between the two of you. Please, Olaf Scholz. Sorry, I'm switching to uh, English habits. Uh, please, Mr. Scholz. No, don't mind. Um, yes, there is time for a European FTT. And this is why I worked very hard to have uh, the FTT listed in the, uh, in the number or the collection of possible European own resources in the council decision. So you find there the... Uh, some revenues from emission trade, especially in seafaring and uh, aviation. Then we have uh, 
the question of uh, border adjustment mechanism according to the questions of emission trade uh, income, which could be a known resource. Then we have the plastic tax. We have the question of digital taxation, which we already discussed, and the proposal of the Commission to come uh, the best after a, you, an international agreement, otherwise a known one, later for, for 2023, and then the question of FTT. And I very much urge that this is in the number of named taxations. Um, I think it's very difficult to find a solution, but possibly is the, the own resources is one of the ways of getting the necessary majority for something in this field. Um, if you look at the proposal which is now on the table, which is mostly following the French model or the web model we have also on the, uh, on, in London, which is a bit different, the stamp duty, but not that much. If you see this and you would understand that Germany would raise a revenue from one, of 1 1.4 billion and Austria, for instance, would raise 36 million. You could understand that the view of countries, whether this is really of biggest importance for them to implement a tax like this, is completely different. If you also look at the, the system of the countries that already have a financial transaction tax, which is Belgium, which is France, which is Italy, which is Spain um, now, or willing to, Spain willing to do so, and uh, implementing it, and Greece we have, and you just put Germany to it, it would be more than 90% of the revenues. So we are discussing on the European level where a, a small group of countries is re really profiting from it as an income and many others would not really profit. So it's really something that makes sense as a common revenue in Europe and an own resource because then it makes also sense for countries who possibly would just have an income of 500,000 euros because they would benefit from this own resources system which would reduce the money that is necessary to pay back the recovery program debt of the European Union. And this is then something which uh, would help. So the progress might come from putting it to the European level as a own resource question because then many other countries would understand the sense for them though they are not having the revenues within their countries. And this is, I think, the question that really blocks the reform in the past that this is so different in the countries. Um, I think we should make the necessary progress in VAT and VAT and tax fraud. The problem is- in there Minister, the question was whether now is the opportunity to broaden the tax base because the low figures have of course as origin a very small tax base. And the question was whether now Italy and Germany could try again to broaden the tax base towards derivatives as well. So my view in this question is the best thing is to have an agreement and uh, not for having nothing. So we would, should find out what we could get. And uh, it is not good to have a debate where in 10 years, we all be, are a bit older than today. Um, I have even less hair than now, or it's absolutely gray then. And uh, then we continue the debate. We have yet an, no result. So my view is let's take something which we could get. And uh, this would be really a big progress. Uh, on VIT, I think we should try to get something. There are a lot of questions involved. Also the question that the, uh, that the proposal of the commission is implementing is in including a lot of exceptions for reduced VAT taxes, which uh, is not the idea of getting something which is a European solution. So there is a lot of different questions which are in this uh, debate, which are not really linked to the single question because it's all part of the same proposal. So we will have to work on it. But we are doing, we try to find out whether there is something that could be agreed. This is our task as the presidency and discussing with the member states what is feasible for them. Uh, on uh, ESMA, I would uh, really prefer to have a European authority and European measures um, 
in the in the fight against tax arbitrage and all the questions involved there. Um, so I would be very happy if we could make European progress in this field. And it's the only way to make progress. Otherwise, you always have these national debates. And for instance, to come back to the German debate on FTT, um, there is a lot of pe there are a lot of people who, if we are honest, really oppose the idea of a transaction tax. But uh, they say, let's have it European. And then they hope it will never happen. But we should uh, make something different out of it. It will come from Europe and they have to be happy. Roberto. Yes. Um, we, in Italy, we have an FTT, which has a bit broader basis because it includes the derivatives. But we think uh, that it would be uh, very important to achieve an agreement at European level. So we are uh, we support uh, uh, the the common proposal uh, with France and Germany uh, to have uh, this uh, uh, solution with a slightly smaller base, but which would have the benefit to have to be European. Then, it's, especially if we move from enhanced cooperation to European level, I, I agree totally with Olaf that uh, it makes totally sense to make of it uh, a non resources for the union. So we are fully supportive to European. Uh, uh, FTT. Uh, in principle, indeed, it would be better to have a bit broader legal, uh, broader tax base, but uh, I think the added value uh, to have a European level is stronger. So we would uh, lose some tens of million of revenue if we shift this uh, option, but it's worth doing that in order to have a, a solution at, uh, at European level. I don't know if there were other questions to me. I, I don't remember. But there was the question on cum-ex and dividend arbitrage and whether you would support the ESMA proposals towards a European approach to these, this doubtful business model. We, we support this proposal and we have actually closed down these schemes in Italy uh, some years ago. Yeah, lucky you. Uh, uh, but thank you very much. I will be very brief. This issue is uh, probably one which is frustrating most citizens about uh, uh, European integration. If we can make progress in this regard, it will stabilize the support of citizens uh, all over Europe. Therefore, it's for such a big importance. We will continue working on this in an Italian-German uh, setting. We have heard a lot of commitments today. And, uh, and also achievements, and we recognize this, uh, and we know that the main blocking countries in these regards are not Italy or Germany. Uh, having said that, I think the history of fiscal integration in Europe was very often that the United States moved first, and then the OECD followed, and then Europe followed. So we have uni seen unilateral tax action with regards to corporate taxation without asking in Europe. Uh, we have seen this with a clampdown of ta on tax havens. And the big question is, will Europe become in the end a leader uh, in fiscal and tax cooperation and the global fight uh, against money laundering? Uh, I think it was new, the common commitment to European action in the area of dividend arbitrage. We heard with great uh, uh, support, of course, the support for more majority voting. Uh, I'm still a bit puzzled how we get VAT off the ground, but we heard the support from both to work on it. I heard the support on the public country by country reporting from both sides, knowing the difficulties with the Christian Democrats. And I'm looking forward to discuss in the next month the detailed proposals on money laundering and I hope that we have common support, as also Roberto said, not only for a common supervisor, but finally also for something like a European financial police, which like an FBI uh, in the United States can uh, tackle cross-border crime. So thank you for participating. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks for all citizens to listening and we'll continue with this work. All the best and um, uh, vive l'Europe. 
l'Europe. Merci. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.